Welcome. In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at this GrowPow 10 watt, 12 volt solar battery charger and maintainer. So this was provided to me by the distributor, but they're not compensating me for this video and they're not reviewing it before I post it. If you find this video helpful and you want to purchase one of these, I'll put a link to it in the description on Amazon. And if you use that link, it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost anything extra. So let's get this open. So here we have the panel, we have some accessories in the manual. Let's take a look at this. So I'm not going to go over everything. You can pause and read through this, but I'll go over some of the parts. It says it can be used for cars, four wheel drives, trucks, motorcycle, marine, boats, farm equipment, gate opener, or any application where a 12 volt battery is used. This uses a high efficiency MPPT charge controller. So there's two main types of charge controllers. There's MPPT and PW, and MPPT is the better technology. It has a three stage charging algorithm. It's IP65 waterproof. Here are the different components. We have the solar panel. It comes with an SAE plug and then it has adapters for 12 volt socket, for bare wires, or battery clamps. This has instructions on how to use it. It's best to tilt it so it's facing the sun. It has suction cups for mounting it and then choose the appropriate cables. This talks about the LED indicator. So it either flashes, it's solid, or it's off and it tells you the different functions of the solar panel. Something to keep in mind that SAE cables can be reverse polarity. So if you're connecting this to other circuits, you want to make sure the polarity is correct and you can get polarity reverse and performance will be reduced if you're in cloudy situations. So here are the technical specs. This talks about how to test it. So let's look at the panel itself. So these look like monocrystalline cells. Polycrystalline cells will have like a crystalline kind of pattern on them. So the top is a tempered glass. You have keyhole slots here to mount suction cups. On the back we have plastic. So the width across the solar panel is right at eight inches. The whole panel is about nine and a half. The panel the other direction is 13. And the whole thing is, it's kind of tapered, but it's about 16 and a half. Let me measure the cord here. The cord seems to be around 10 feet, give or take a couple inches. Let's look at the accessories here. So you'll add a little bit of length on also if you plug one of these in, but we have battery clamps. Those open up nice and wide. So that will connect in here, like so. Now if you're looking at other accessories, the polarity is not marked on this connector here, but you can look at the cables that came with it and look at the polarity of them and then compare them to your other accessories, or you can measure it with a meter. So we have that, we also have the 12 volt socket. Something to consider with this is that a lot of cars will not turn on the socket if the car is off, but you can oftentimes wire in your own 12 volt socket that's directly connected to the battery. You will want to have a fuse in line with that, and then you can have constant power. And then here we have just bare wires. So if you want to wire this into a system, you can do that with this. You don't have to cut one of the other wires. So if you had this on a shed with a lead acid battery and a light connected to it, you could potentially wire that directly in. Now it wouldn't be a bad idea to also wire in a fuse. So we do have this LED light here. It's currently off. We don't likely have enough light hitting the panel. I'm going to connect this up to a battery anyway, just to see what we get. This is a small lead acid battery. It's 12 volt. Okay, if I turn up my camera light, we are getting some voltage on the panel. The red light means it is charging. Oh, there's one more accessory here. You do have the suction cups. So you could mount these on the front or the rear if you want to suction cup that to a windshield or something. So I don't suspect this is charging very much with just my studio light. But let's measure it anyway. So I have a meter here, I'll turn it on. Now I have the probes put in the COM and the 10 amp max fused input. I'll switch just to current reading. Oh, well, I couldn't switch the mode because it automatically connects up the mode when you plug in on this meter. But on other meters, you would want to switch the mode. So now I'll disconnect one of the leads here. And I'll touch to the battery. That is the reverse polarity. Let's do that the other way. So it looks like we're charging at 0.5 amps. So I wouldn't suspect very high charging on this while it's inside. Let's take this outside and test it. Okay, so I'm out here at my car and I've mounted the solar panel on the windshield with the suction cups. Now when you put the suction cups on, there's little tabs. You wanna probably make sure those are towards the outside to make it easier to remove them. I have the negative terminal from the panel connected into my battery. I have the positive clamp on the positive lead of my meter. I have that set to the 10 amp mode here. I switched to a different meter. It has a better screen for the bright sun. So I'll take the negative and I'll touch it here to the positive terminal. And here we're getting 0 0.53, 0 0.54 amps. So that equates to, I think it's around six and a half watts, somewhere between six and seven watts of charging I'm getting. So I can take this clamp here, I could put it on and then I could close the hood and leave the cord hanging out a little bit. 
Now I could also suction cup this to the inside and I could connect it up to an inside socket as long as it has constant power. So I was getting around six and a half watts. Now this is a 10 watt panel, but there are many different things that could keep you from getting that full potential of it. So right now the sun's hitting it at an angle, so it's not directly on. Also the angle this direction is probably not 100% optimum, but as a battery maintainer, this is going to work fine because you can just leave this plugged in all the time and when it gets the sun, it will top the battery off. Another thing to consider is you don't want shade on any part of the panel, even like a leaf sitting on it could degrade the output. And if you have this mounted on the inside windshield, make sure your windshield's very clean. So that's the GrowPow 12 volt, 10 watt solar battery charger and maintainer. If you have a vehicle, lawnmower, motorcycle that you store for long periods of time without use, the battery can drain. So this is a great way to maintain the battery without having to plug it in somewhere. So this would be great for cars, RVs. You could put this on the side of your shed to keep a riding mower charged. I like that this is waterproof and has a long cord so you can put the solar panel in the sun and you can run the power to where you need to charge. And it's nice that it came with multiple options for connecting it up. So you can use it for temporary use or you can do a permanent installation with it. So that's all I'm going to cover in this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. Comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate it if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.